Real Madrid. Still four points clear at the top of La Liga table after a 1-0 victory over Athletic Bilbao. However, Barcelona trying to make a fight of it. They beat Villarreal 4-1 at the Camp Nou today. And it's in Catalonia that we start as we welcome in Ali Moreno and Frank Leboeuf to the show. Ali, sometimes my job is very easy because the most obvious question after that Barcelona performance is, why don't they do that every week? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm sure that that's a question that every hardcore Barcelona fan is asking themselves right now. Now, here's the thing. While people are going to jump on very quickly on the idea of Antoine Griezmann playing well because he's finally playing in the position that he feels most comfortable, that is a very simple and very easy and obvious argument to make. The counterpart to that argument is, or the other part to that argument is, the fact that if Antoine Griezmann is going to play in the position that he feels most comfortable, that also means that somebody else has to change position. Somebody else has to change their game. It only happens that that somebody else that has to change his game and has to modify what he does on the field is Lionel Messi. And so, therefore, you have to ask the question. To the biggest Griezmann fan out there, if indeed you're going to change the position and the role of a player on this team, is that going to be Griezmann or is that going to be Messi? And the answer to that question is only one, and that is Antoine Griezmann. Today, in the short term, it looked good. It worked well. The back and forth between Luis Suarez and the understanding with Antoine Griezmann playing off of each other, that Griezmann sometimes would drop off into a playmaking position, then Messi would go into a higher role in an attacking in the final third, and the plays interchange between the two of them. When Luis Suarez showed to hold the ball up, then Griezmann was running beyond him, and you're thinking, well, yes, how come you haven't done this more often? And the truth is, it changes the dynamic of the team. And against a team like Villarreal, it worked because Villarreal lends itself to Barcelona playing the way that they want to play. Villarreal is not a team that's going to get in your face. It's more of a possession team, a lot like Barcelona. And Barcelona, a better version of Villarreal at that. And so today it was perfect. Today it was great. And today you saw from Antoine Griezmann the potential of what he could be at Barcelona. He just hasn't shown a lot of that for long periods of time this season. Some people will point to the position. I'll point to the fact that there's been times in which we have seen a Antoine Griezmann that has lacked confidence. Somewhere in the middle is a true Barcelona. But today, it's not a reflection of what Barcelona has been throughout the course of the season. Do you agree, Frank? I do agree, but if I can add something, is the, 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 the game that Sergio Roberto had also to compensate the, the, the position of the, of, the, of the three. Because, in fact, they play at two at front, which is maybe the first time of the season that we see that. And it's why maybe Griezmann was comfortable. Uh, Messi could, uh, could play wherever he wanted, like he always do. But I agree with Ali. He tried to play with Griezmann and uh, his will has been a, a real success tonight. And, uh, and we saw some wonderful moves between the two or between the three with Suarez. But I want to... I want to really emphasize the, the work of Sergio Roberto uh, before he was moved on the right side. But when he played on the left side to compensate and defend well and help the three to be able to do what they, whatever they wanted. So the question is why if Keke Sechen is able to make that decision uh, but only four games before the end, why he didn't do that before? Why he needed to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to be questioned by a, a Griezmann father if he was driving the truck or not? Uh, he gave an answer today, but it's maybe a late answer because maybe they lost the championship, the Liga, uh, because of, of that late decision when he has the player... He has the right player at the right position tonight. Uh, Ali, a couple of things that I a couple of things that I wanted to address there, Dan, that that I think are good points there by Frank. The the idea of Sergio Roberto and uh, indeed also Arturo Vidal, two guys who have to cover defensively because you know that you're not going to get any work any any work defensively for um, Lionel Messi. And if he's going to be at the top of that diamond, if he's going to play underneath the strikers, and he's not going to defend. You're going to need guys who are going to say, you know what, my job and my role on this field right now is to win the ball and win spaces in behind Lionel Messi because he's not coming back. 
And that's part of the reason you don't sacrifice Lionel Messi and put him further up, uh, down the field because you're saying to yourself, man, if he's not coming back and Griezmann's not coming back and, of course, Suarez is not coming back, now we're out of position and Semedo is going forward and then Jordi Alba is going forward. And so now we're on balance. And so, therefore, you need the work of Sergio Roberto. You need the work of Arturo Vidal to balance off. And I agree totally with, with Frank there. Now, as to why this hasn't happened, well, I think that in itself answers the question. You are dropping Lionel Messi, your guy, your attacking talent. The, the best player, perhaps, in the history of the game, you're telling him, go further away from goal. Now, this is a guy that's been scoring the key goals for you. So in order to make that decision and saying, you know what, we're better off if you're further away from goal because that accommodates the best abilities of Antoine Griezmann. That's a big sacrifice to make, and today it worked. But today, Lionel Messi did not score a goal. Now, that's a, the that's a thing that Barcelona sort of has to answer and Setien has to answer. Are we willing to sacrifice the offensive productivity of Lionel Messi? And is he willing to buy into that? Because that means that Barcelona is going to win games. On today's evidence, you say yes. But long term, not sure that that's going to be the answer. Well, big picture long term, Ali, of course, it's all about the Champions League. You've got the return leg against mm -hmm. Napoli in August and then those three one-off matches uh, in Portugal. If it works collectively better for the team for Lionel to play deeper and Griezmann to play in his preferred position, then surely Messi, who we know is so desperate for this trophy, will swallow it. And I'm sure he will. And, uh, and if there's one thing that we have learned about Lionel Messi, or at least that's the perception that we have, is that he's all about the success of the team. Okay. Well, now here's a real opportunity to prove that because your role is going to change. If indeed this is about what's best for the group, then, okay, Lionel Messi has to drop off a little bit further from goal in a playmaking position that, by the way, he has taken that role on this season. Uh, perhaps not by design, but naturally he has drifted back further away from goal to be a playmaker and to be the guy who finds the passes. But here's what needs to happen. Antoine Griezmann needs to continue to play the way that he played today. Because the moment that Lionel Messi sees that those balls that he's providing Luis Suarez or Anton Griezmann or Ansu Fati or whoever's in that front line, if those balls are not uh, producing any sort of results, then Messi is going to go on his own and he's going to do what he wants. And what he wants is uh, be desperate to score goals and be desperate to create something for Barcelona. And in doing that, the team gets disorganized. How key is getting this balance right going forward, Frank? Have we seen a glimpse of today of maybe how we could see it play out next month? Well, f for me, it's, uh, it's not going to be uh, solved by the three and how they're going to work. As, as we agreed with Ali, I think it's really the position of, for tonight, Vidal and, 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 uh, and uh, Sergio Roberto to work very hard to defend and to compensate. De Jong's going to be back as well, and I think he's going to take Vidal's place. Uh, you have some young players coming, uh, Ricky Puch, Ricky Puch, sorry, uh, who work hard and, and every time comes uh, create something good. Uh, Rakitic can help uh, somehow. Uh, I think it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to work. It has to work because it's been shown today that the only way that Barcelona is back to, we'll say, what we used to see. And, and I don't think it's going to be a real problem to see uh, Messi a little bit uh, uh, behind the two others because tonight he scored a goal. It was denied by an uh, uh, offside from Vidal, I think. And he hit the post with a free kick. So he's going to be there. He's going to score penalties. He's going to score all the goals. But everybody has to understand for the, the best of Barcelona, especially if Messi wants to win the Champions League with his teammates, that he has to do that. And he, they have to play a true at front with uh, Suarez and Griezmann because it worked today and it was the, the evidence of a great future for them. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.